give you 10 things to do to find Mr. Right or Ms. Right. Now, if you're married, don't make the list. <laughs> I'm just helping you out, brother. I'm just helping you out. <laughs> Sisters, my help. Please accept my help. Okay, and so, you know, the first thing is this. Make the most of your parents. Did you get that? Don't say, I want someone who loves me for what, what's on the inside. Now, if you're walking around looking like Don King, you got to need your hair sticking up. I mean, it's just, you know, no. make the most of your parents. Groom yourself. Look coiffured. Smell good. Make, and I'm not trying to be, be silly. I'm saying make the most of yourself. Because people want to look at someone that carries themselves in a way that says, I take care of myself physically. Don't say I'm a spirit being. You are, but make sure you make the best of your parents. Second, know what you're looking for. A person, if you're looking for a person of character, faith, and purpose, know what you're looking for. In other words, you can't be someone that's unclear. Well, I'll just take right now, pickings are slim. I'll just take what I can get. That can't be your perspective. Know what you're looking for and have an idea what you're looking for. Be clear. And it's, you got to know that. One guy said this, maybe some women aren't meant to be tamed. Maybe they just need to run free till they find someone just as wild to run with them. Maybe you've been looking at the wrong one. Number three, take your time. Don't get swept away by infatuation. I mean, I've seen so many people that just met somebody, would you, how long you known each other? About an hour? This is the one. This, you know how many times I've heard people say to me, Pastor, this is the one. This is the one. And then I asked the question. I said, tell me his middle name. I don't know that. What, what impo- How's that important? It is important. It means you don't even know each other. Tell me her middle name. You know, in fact, premarital counseling, when I used to do it, we used to ask questions. I'd ask questions. I'd say things like this. I want to see. I'm not there to try to, you know, kill their romance. I'm just trying to understand because they're getting ready to go to the altar. And I'd say to the guy, I said, I said, please tell me what, let's say her name is Louise. Tell me Louise's favorite meal. And he'd look at her and say, what is it? <laughs> and I'll say to Louise, Louise, tell me Bob's favorite color. <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite color? <laughs> and they don't know each other. And if you don't know each other, then how are you going to get married? Don't rush something. And sometimes I'll ask a tricky question. I'll say, Bob, when was the last time Louise was arrested? <laughs> and the question has lots of accusation in it. And then he look at me and said, never. I said, Louise, oh, last time was February. <laughs> and, and he's shocked. And he's looking at me with his eyes open like, what? No. I said, keep it down, keep it down. I said, remember when Solomon built the temple? When they came into the place where the temple was built, They slid the rocks into the wall, but the chiseling was done outside the camp. I said, my office, we're sliding rocks in. When you leave, all the chiseling and noise is going to be made outside. I got you understand. And so it was just giving a biblical perspective. And so I want you to see, take your time. Don't get swept away by infatuation. Just don't get caught up with just how they look and the car they're riding. Or don't get caught up with those things because remember you want to get married and be able to live a life that is pleasant and satisfactory and wholesome and and it meets your needs emotionally and spiritually as well as you meet their needs so be conscious of these things